Brace yourselves for one of the biggest tinfoilers we've met yet. The dude. Adam's apple. Large trachea. You can see the collarbones. Uh, probably padded. I don't know. You can see the huge hands. Hands are humongous. Welcome one and all to another episode of Tim Fall Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Yes, we are back with more conspiracy theorists who feel the need to empty the contents of their brain into YouTube without the necessary filters. That clip at the start was from a video made by YouTuber, Conspiracies by Hans 4, who has some, well, interesting ideas. From the downright kooky, to the utterly offensive. Today, however, we'll be looking at one of his more science-based conspiracies, as we delve into his belief that radiocarbon dating is not real. Does he have some evidence to back this up? Or is it all just hot air? I can't wait to find out. So radiocarbon dating, I'll just kind of skim through this and just say certain things. Uh, so basically, I guess first I'll just basically say the issues with, with carbon dating, and then we'll go through and I'll show you that these are all huge issues. Well, so first of all, just something that people always, they, uh, they don't understand. People just don't even understand what science is. Could not agree with you more. What an excellent start. Some people do not understand what science is. They think that what science is, is what the authority tells you. That's not science. That's an appeal to authority. Just because someone has on a lab coat, just because somebody has a bunch of science equipment behind them, that's not science. So I guess this isn't science then. Damn it. Thought I'd get away with that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just a huge, a huge part of science is that everybody should be able to go out and, uh, and, and reproduce anything that, that you are claiming. You know, if I suppose that I said I had a magical black box that uh, produces electricity on its own, and it's just a black box and it, it just outputs electricity, and, but I said I, I only made one of them, and I'm not going to tell you how, how to build it, and, you know, you're going to call me, you're going to say that I'm just making it up. To be fair, I would say that, especially if you don't explain how you made your little box. I get what you mean though, because for scientific concepts in textbooks, there's also no exponent. Oh. That's the same thing with these radiocarbon dating things. Who, like, they, it's, we have to put our faith in them that what they're telling us is accurate. You know. But the science that makes your computer work, that's okay, isn't it? And the medical science that creates drugs to fight infection, you trust those, right? What about the science that allows you to call someone on the other side of the world and speak to them in real time? No doubting that one. Where do you draw the line on dodgy science? And here's a big, here's a huge thing. I, I still haven't been able to find out. Well, here, we'll just start going through. I'll, I'll make some important uh, comments. Okay, so first of all, it's, here's the general idea behind radiocarbon dating. There's, there's, so they claim, right? How, how do we corroborate any of these things? They, they claim that there's a radioactive form of carbon called carbon-14, and by, by measuring how much carbon-14 there is in an object, you can see how much of it has decayed, and that's supposed to tell you uh, how old something is. In a nutshell, that's correct, yes. At this point, I feel like we need to just confirm what carbon-14 actually is. The carbon that you see in the periodic table of elements is carbon-12. It's what we would call an element in its atomic state. Six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. The number 12 being its mass, so six protons added to six neutrons. Carbon-14 is an isotope of carbon which means it has a different number of neutrons. The proton number 
must stay the same, otherwise it can't be carbon anymore. So 14 minus 6 equals 8. That means carbon-14 has 6 protons and 8 neutrons. Electrons have a mass of pretty much zero. Now when cosmic rays strike a nitrogen atom in the atmosphere, effectively a proton becomes a neutron. So the mass stays the same, but the proton number changes from a 7 to a 6, meaning nitrogen-14 becomes carbon-14. So, you know, similar to vaccines, there's a story that seems plausible. And to some people, that's enough. It's like, oh, that, that sounded like it could work. Okay, just because somebody tells you a story, <laughs> that doesn't make it fact. Indeed it does. But if that story is backed up by more evidence than you can shake a stick at, then generally you'd accept that story as being one of non-fiction. So, uh... So here, carbon-14, the number 14, it's a double seven, all right? Uh, Nobel Prize, anything that you get prizes and awards and stuff for, you can guarantee that it's a satanic, the, you don't get awards for doing good work in this world, you get a, rewards for fooling people, deceiving people. Oh, so my 2012-2013 Miss of the Season award was because I deceive people. I'm confused. Did I score the chance that I actually missed or did I miss it which deceived people because we lost the game rather than won it? I don't know. It was a howler though. Hit the post from two yards out. Okay, so here, let's look based on the fact. Radiocarbon dating method is based on the fact that radiocarbon is constantly being created in the atmosphere by the interaction of cosmic rays with the atmospheric nitrogen. What? The resulting radiocarbon combines with atmospheric oxygen to form radioactive carbon dioxide, which is incorporated into plants by photosynthesis. Animals get it by eating plants, okay. And then when, when the plant or animal dies, you stop exchanging carbon, so then it just starts to decay. Okay, so that's their theory. Um... So here, just already already problems with this. Like, how how do you know that the carbon uptake is un universal, right? As we've established, carbon-14 is produced when cosmic rays strike nitrogen in our atmosphere. Since the levels of nitrogen are in our atmosphere and the rate of cosmic rays hitting Earth are, for all intents and purposes, constant, then we can infer that the rate of carbon-14 production is also constant. Why, why do people assume that a plant uptakes carbon the same as a, a squirrel uptakes carbon is the same as a piece of wood uptakes carbon is the same as a human uptakes carbon, which is the same as a, a human bone uptake? Do you see how, and how could anyone, there's no way that this field has been studied so hard that we know exactly how a human uptakes carbon, we know exactly how a plant, so all of these things are just giant unknowns and you're just taking it based on faith that everything absorbs this magical carbon-14 in the same way. I hate to break it to you, but it has been studied hard enough. It's not everything that absorbs carbon-14 from the atmosphere. It's plants, and they do that during photosynthesis. It then works its way through the trophic levels via the food chain. Because of the similar production rates and decay rates, the levels of carbon-14 in living things is almost the same. All right, so that's already assumptions that you're, that you're making, which are horrible assumptions. So here's another assumption. Uh, the, um, okay, so they claim that the, the half-life of carbon is 5,730 years. How, if, if we've only started looking at carbon since the 1940s, how... How could we be so certain that the half-life is like 5,000 years? Do we even really have samples? Like, does it... So hopefully that makes sense to you. Yes, I understand what you're saying here, Hans. The calculation to figure out the half-life of a radioactive material are quite complex. However, all you're required to do is watch it for a short length of time and count the rate of decay. We know the approximate ratio of carbon-14 in any living thing. So because we know how much decays in our given experiment time, then you can extrapolate a half-life from this. 
the oldest dates that can be measured by this is like 50,000 years. So when when somebody is measuring, when they're measuring the age of dinosaur bones, okay, dinosaurs are fake. They don't exist. So look, carbon-14 dating only is accurate to about 50,000 years. And what, the, people are trying to tell us that they can measure how old dinosaur bones are, like millions of years old? So, so for that, they don't do carbon-14 dating. They use a different radioactive material that has an even huger half-life. How could we possibly know accurately the half-life of something that has such a humongous half? It's just, it, it starts to become ludicrous. Well, I've just told you, but yes, that's exactly what we do. We date the fossils based on material with a longer half-life. There's no way that you can accurately measure the age of something so far in the past. That's just out of, it just doesn't make, it, it, it's, you need to realize it's sci-fi, it's fantasy. That's fantasy land. Fantasy land for you, perhaps. Interesting that the computer you are using probably has plastic in it. Here's an idea. Go and Google how plastics are made through polymerization and then wallow in the irony of that fantasy land statement. You know, these are just theories that somebody, and, and you're just making all sorts of assumptions. Uh, yeah, dinosaur bones don't even exist. That's just a whole other thing. It's just, when have you ever dug up a fossil in your backyard? Or have you ever, have you ever heard of somebody doing that? No, it's always them who find it. Uh, that's just always how these hoaxes go. If, right, if dinosaurs actually existed and dinosaur fossils were actually a thing, there, people would find them. You know, it wouldn't just be the archaeologists. What is it with people not knowing they're called paleontologists? Uh, yeah, so let's just keep going. Um, it's, it's honestly, it's sci-fi. You go read this, you go read these articles and it sounds, it sounds exactly like a, a Star Trek episode. Measurement of radiocarbon was originally done by beta counting devices. Okay. Just because you give something a name that doesn't prove anything. Um, atoms, you know, we haven't even proved that atoms exist yet. This is a picture of a hydrogen atom taken with a quantum microscope. That one was just a straight rejection, wasn't it? Now we use accelerator mass spectrometry. <laughs> like, just because you give it a fancy science name doesn't make it real. Just because large words confuse you, it doesn't mean it's not real. Okay, so yeah, carbon dating, huge part of their, uh, their toolbox of things that they use to just deceive us. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. So we need a new angle to keep the public controlled on the science front, make it believable, include a nice story. No problem, boss. No problem. Right, what we got here then? Dinosaurs. Climate change. <laughs> the ISS, good one. Uh, what else we got here? Radiocarbon dating, that'll suppress the masses, no problem. Hang on. Perfect. Evolution. I haven't spun this one for a while, actually. Yeah. Let's go through this. Darwin's a nice old man figure to look up to. It's got complex patterns that confuse and disorientate. Even a book. Gotcha. So Willard Libby, this is the person that I guess discovered, you know, it's just a look at the duping delight right there. You can just see it. These are BDF TMIs. Look at all these awards. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein's a grandma tranny. So obvious. Uh, you don't get awards like this unless you're a Satanist deceiver. Okay, I'm done. That's it. When all you can do is comment on someone's looks rather than their scientific discoveries, you're just scoring a massive own goal. Hans continues to berate those involved with the discovery of radiocarbon dating, including at one point the accusation of transvesticism against Leona Woods, an American female physicist that worked on the Manhattan Project amongst other things. It really gets weird after this. If you'd like to delve into it yourself, I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I am deeply grateful that you take time out of your day to watch me. Please do like and subscribe for more. 
and I'll see you on Friday for the 75k special. Bye.